go. Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This is game two between Doodle and Sterling. Bottom left and corner, we got Doodle starting as the blue Protoss, which feels appropriate somehow. Bottom right and corner, we got Sterling starting as the yellow Terran. This is on Apocalypse, three player map, which I'm trying to, I, this kind of came up. I think the last three player map that was ramped that I can think of was Plasma, which was a troll map. But I'm going to keep that in mind. That was, if for people paying attention that have been here on the long casts, Apocalypse, non-ramped map, a lot of three player maps for whatever reason non-ramped. And it's become kind of a curiosity for me as to why that is or is not the case. Anyway, if you missed game one, which, uh, I mean, come on, watch every single game. Why are you here on this channel otherwise, right? No, just kidding. I don't, I don't fault anybody for skipping a game here or there. Game one, Sterling went for a very bold strategy to go for the Vulture drop, and unfortunately Doodle just had the perfect counter as far as just straight up build order play, which was the DT drop of his own. It's a little bit unfortunate. I'm going to see... I'll be interested to see if Sterling ends up in a little bit more of a fortuitous situation. Heads up versus Doodle between the two of them. Uh, I don't know if they're evenly matched or not uh, because I haven't seen enough of Sterling's play. And I don't feel like game one, like game one, a lot of things were sharp. Here and there, it looks like we have a play depot alongside a barracks, a little bit more defensive here. Um, I will say it looked like Sterling was able to play bold and greedy in game one. Um, he did, I think, miss like I think when you see the three Dragoons and stop, your eyeballs have to raise sort of a little bit as a Terran player. You gotta go, okay. And that's when Vultures, if you're not if you're not going for Vulture drop already, maybe plop them out and just check for that third base just in case sort of thing um, is kind of my current feeling overall. But you'll see as, as, thring, as things progress. Anyway, gas up and a barracks up. And this is a quick gas take here. So it's either going to be factory, so it's possible this is just going to be three marines into factory, but it is, <coughs> excuse me, also possible that upon seeing the initial Dragoon skip from Doodle, previous map, or maybe he just wants to make sure he doesn't get gas stolen is another possibility. But anyway, it's also a possibility of seeing, okay, if you skip Zelt this time, I want to make sure I'm in an opportunity to maybe go two gate, something like, or two gate, two factory, maybe uh, bust or even press. I feel like out of all of the meta, as far as the state of play right here, PVZ or PVT is the one that's most up in the air. In the meantime, though, it looks like Doodle got first scout, is able to spot the initial factory drop, and knows that with that initial factory, he is going to have to be potentially aware of early game pressure. First Dragoon queued up, second Dragoon. Again, a skip of Zealot, by the way, from Doodle. And then it's one of those things I'm uh, I'm not sure if it's just Doodle saying, I feel like I can defend without it, which is possible. Maybe he's got the micro, but that's the case. Or not. Um, I'm actually curious to see in this exact situation how many Terran. This is kind of a side thing. So it looks like we are going to see a bunker, for, or never mind, command center with the Marines um, towards the front. But I'm three Marines does beat a Dragoon. Oftentimes you'll see the first uh, Vulture alongside. Looks like the Vulture is being skipped for a machine shop instead. But I'm kind of curious to see an initial three Marines, a Vulture, and an SCV start pressing out on the front. Because I, I feel like that could add some spice. Doodle really te like saying, okay, you didn't build a bunker. I'm going to try to punish you for that. He's taking a lot of damage on that Dragoon, but doing some pretty good micro. And in the space of that micro has managed to win. And now he's got a full health Dragoon and a very damaged Dragoon that he's got to back off to go ahead and shield regenerate. So now we have an empty bunker on the front. So Doodle with the killer instinct, great play. And Sterling being punished for repositioning. And he's going to end up with a <coughs> much later command center as a result. And he's going to have to be careful with this initial Marine to make sure it gets directly in the base. And the other problem is this Dragoon, it doesn't have to back out. What it can do is it can go ahead and attack the Marine and walk into the main. It looks like Doodle is going to go ahead and back out once that initial Marine's in there. He's gotten, uh, first of all, that delayed command center. He's got a lot of other victories in between. This Dragoon has three kills already, so not only did he get the two Marine... Or the, sorry, uh, never, he didn't get the SCV kill. So on top, did Sterling my, uh, scout with the SCV? Yeah, of course he did. I just missed the SCV scouting timing. Ignore me altogether. 
Anyway, so we got a battered bunker that's burning. For alliteration's sake. And we need some SCVs on it ASAP. We got two Dragoons nearby that could just walk up and sneeze on it and honestly take it out. A turret, just in case there were DTs as far as a follow-up. So you can see Sterling respecting. This might be tournament nerves right here. Sterling allowing this bunker to burn down, at least to this state. <laughs> it is getting repaired. In the meantime, Doodle fanning out to a defensive position, just in case Vultures are playing. He's got his front door semi-blockaded with that observatory. <coughs> Excuse me. Still got a little bit of a cough. Uh, and has gone two gate observer in the space of this. And I think he's going to, especially with a lot of the early game pressure he's applied to Sterling, going to opt for, I would presume, a quick third base. Engineering Bay floating out there to get some additional scouting information. I like seeing that from Sterling. First factory is up. Initial siege tanks out. Second factory just now being plopped down. Siege tech finished, which will make Sterling feel a little bit more comfortable about his initial game situation. And we do see Doodle... Seeing, feeling absolutely no pressure from vultures or anything else out of the map is going to go ahead and wander out. And I presume put down, I'm not sure why I'm saying presume so much today. It, I think he's going to go ahead and drop that uh, Nexus without a lot of turret coverage, but going to move in that observer potentially ahead of time just to make absolutely sure. I'm kind of waiting to see with a, he's, he's saving the resources for it, but I think he wants to get a look at the factory count before he makes a full commitment here. So seize the two factories. Sees the third factory underneath and is going to go ahead yeah, and plop that nexus down in the space of it. But this is kind of the stage. This is clever. So Sterling, I think, saw the observer going in. He's going to drop a second machine shop and he's trying to hide maybe a fourth factory. And I'm wondering if we're going to see a fifth factory as well up here in the corner. So he's trying to hide that fourth factory away from Doodle. And this might give Doodle some pause for thought. Doodle's checking the front right the second to see what he's up against and doesn't see any vultures or any siege tanks right this second. But Sterling's setting himself up for a... Yeah, okay, we see two additional... Does, does Doodle see the edge of that? So he sees the fourth factory here, but this is going up to a six factory mid-game, which is most certainly going to be an aggressive push. Six, six or seven factory... <coughs> excuse me, six or seven factories, as we discussed the previous game, is about maximum output across two bases. So it's going to be siege tanks and vultures galore. I think eight factories is is like Ultramax. Eight factories is like, okay, you're skipping some siege tanks to get some vultures out across the, the machine shops uh, factory line as well, I believe. Uh, if I recall. Anyway, more Dragoons, however, fanning out. Decent supply lead here from Doodle. Doodle's done a good job of macroing in the midst of this. He's hasn't saturated his third base as of yet, but has gone for a gateway flood underneath this. He's getting a Reaver out. And a Citadel of Adun as well. I'll be interested to see if he's going to have a shuttle alongside that Reaver. An SCV trying to make his way out is instantly going to get intercepted. So, right now, the supply lead is in Doodle's favor. That is going to reverse pretty rapidly. Uh, Sterling's about two workers off. Uh, and I presume he's going to wait for plus one. Uh, damn it, said presume again. We're going to stop saying that in this commentary. You guys catch me on it in the comments, okay? Presumably, this is going to be the best commentary ever. I'll be able to avoid repeating words overall. A bunker getting dropped, of all things, in the main. But I think this is going to be plus one weapons, and as soon as it finishes an attack from there. And Doodle, in the meantime, might think this is okay. This is only four factory, and so it's okay. It's going to be a little bit unit light. But we'll see if he's got sufficient defense to deal with this otherwise once this attack starts moving out. Right now, Sterling... Positioning a little bit forward as though he was going to go towards that third. This is kind of the problem with the current state of PVT, by the way, is this actually... I see this, I usually think, like, okay, yeah, this is going to be a rush for sure. This might just be the current state of PVP and Sterling solution to it. Is get this many units out to deal with that initial reaver and just have overwhelming units to go ahead and grab that third. I still think this is going to be an attack across the six, but there are there is a scenario where this is, in fact, going for just a third base. Anyway, Reaver's dropped. One siege tank getting wiped out. Doodle actually keeping that supply difference still pretty considerable. And I'm not sure if that's just missed macro cycles or what, but now we've got all, it looks like we see one missed macro cycle right there. But this is usually, so if we deduct 20 here, 20, Doodle still with the uh, decent worker and supply lead. And now that plus one weapons finished, plus one armor is queued up. So I take it back with plus one weapons queued up. Sterling might just be thinking about going for that third and wanted to have 
the sizable troop count to go ahead and make it happen. A couple of vultures sneak out. And this is the problem these days is it's like, okay, I th this is not a response I've seen as of yet in the current TVP meta. More often what I've seen is this five factory or four factory. Four factory trying to be a little bit lighter and more vulture heavy and run across the map. Um, or, uh, or five factory being a little bit kind of having the threat and basically Terran looking for an opportunity like, okay, if you're playing too light against me, I'll just go for an attack, but if you've got a sizable army and you're playing respectably, I'll go grab a third. I think Sterling's doing that, but with six factory right this second. And unfortunately, even with the six factory, he's currently uh, down overall. And the other issue is, is he didn't build a surplus of SCV. This is the other, okay, he is going for it. That was the other thing that was confusing me is oftentimes you don't, you'll still see an SCV surge in the space of that. You won't see the pause at 34 um, workers. And it looks like we <coughs> are seeing a, a queue up again. Sterling now taking the high ground in between. Reaver has been taken out. Some zealots making the way in. Sterling not quite on top of there. A mind drag into the siege shank. And unfortunately completely unsieged. And Doodle's army's right there. Zealot streaming across. Great engagement for Doodle. He's going to be able to regroup. And what a huge mind shot. Or Reaver shot, I should say. The Reaver popping in and out and completely obliterating that siege tank line. And that's going to be GG from Sterling. Really well played from Doodle. Yeah, I think it was just some smothering macro from Doodle making all the difference there. Because I think they're... Honestly, when I look at the mid-game here... Um, a little bit too early, <coughs> too early here. I think what Sterling was thinking here with the 6 Factory is, is okay, I'm going to end up with a, a, in the pause of the SV production at some point. Is I am going to push into my opponent and I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, wreak some havoc. And he's going to be undersupplied and will wipe him out. But Doodle very rapidly getting the gateway count up and having good saturation across the 6th. And so he's already got... He just maintains this supply. He's already got the perfect worker count to saturate the 3 bases. 55 is usually like right where you want to be at. He's at 51, which is a really solid lo location. So he's... I think Sterling sneaking out and trying to get a gauge of that army, realized, okay, this is actually still a pretty sizable army, so he's moving out to make something happen, <coughs> but he's still at a massive supply deficit just because Doodle macroed his brains out in the space of this. Did play Gateway Man, but played Gateway Man from a position where really well executed. Anyway, Doodle takes this series. Uh, my Dark Horse is active and going through the winner's bracket. We'll see Sterling in the next round. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.